Hello, I'm El Pato, and this is still Battle Brothers. So last time we left off, we got a couple new weapons, and uh, did, did a couple fights with uh, raiders and uh, brigand thugs. Today, we're just going to keep on clawing our way back up and uh, try to get some more gear and some more gold. Whichever one comes first, really. Well, first, let's see who they have to hire over here. Mm, yeah. That guy's pretty tempting because he's a mason. Masons tend to learn fast, and they're very good at physical activity, making them pretty good recruits. However, we know that uh, there's a couple contracts available up in the northeast there. We also know there's one over here in Sandorf. We just gotta find the right place to start. There's a lot to do. Yeah, let's head over to Sandorf. I know where this contract is because I looked last time. It's that uh, that graveyard down there in the south. I'm pretty sure I know what they want it, want me to do, but let's check. Yeah, obtain some kind of artifact. Uh, these missions are a little bit different than what we've been dealing with. I mean, we've been going on missions where they either either have us carrying something somewhere, or uh, killing some guys for them. But this one, we have to obtain an artifact, and normally, uh, unlike the other ones, the objective is not to fight whatever is over here at the mission. The objective is to get it and go. And you'll see, once the text comes up, you'll it'll be a little bit more clear. But I, I know what kind of enemy I'm fighting. I'm looking at my options here. Let's just say poking them isn't going to be the best strategy. Alright, it's dawn. Let's attack. Alright, so pretty much what this says, uh, some guys went to the ruins, found the artifact, it was pretty easy, but then skeletons. Spooky, scary skeletons. So this is one of the enemy factions we haven't fought yet, it's the Ancient Dead. It's pretty much all skeletons in ancient heavy armor. These guys are ancient auxiliaries. And uh, pretty much, our guys already have the artifact. We're just going to leave. We're retreating. It's going to be a bit of a blow to my morale. But uh, fighting these guys with pointy sticks really is not going to work. I mean, you try poking a skeleton with a spear and see if he, uh, if he gets hurt or if he just laughs at you. Until we get some stuff with, like, uh, blunt damage and slashing damage, like, at least in a significant amount, we're not going to try to fight these guys. It's going to take a long time, and my guys are going to end up with some pretty bad injuries because the, they don't they don't hit like kittens, and they have those uh, cleavers. There's they're a, a sort of tier one point five cleaver that hurts your guys pretty bad. Well, crowns well deserved. We didn't get anything from that mission, but I'm still going to sell some trash here just to simplify things, you know. So we've got our two Burkhard the Fishers. Oh, excuse me. Burkhard the Fisher and Burkhard the Fisher Man. I don't know. All right. So next order of business, find another contract. Now we kind of know where some are. They're up in the Northeast. So the, way, the quickest way to get there is to sail. Now, I know for a fact that this one has some good contracts, so I wanted to, uh, I, I, even though it cost me 200-something 200, 200 gold, uh, I think the time it, sa it saved me actually would save me in the long run. Well, they have some grave robbers here, but, you know, we've, we've been down that road, and uh, I'm not hoping for much with this guy. I just want a warm body. Put him in the lineup. And he's about as mediocre as our last grave robber. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I'm glad he's here. We're going to make him into something. We really will. So 
So this one, track down something next to the town. I can do that. I mean, they've got terrified villagers. If we track this thing down and we solve that for them, their prices are going to be better. And I'm really cool with that. I'm sure as hell not going to follow them through the swamp. If you ever fought anything in a swamp on this game, you'll know why I'm trying to avoid it. It's just, it's an awful place. Fighting in the swamp is exhausting and uh, it takes you forever to hit things because it has like a debuff on your, your accuracy and such. And your guys have a chance of getting sick while they're traveling in it. So these guys, just a bunch of brigand thugs, right? I mean, I, I would have sped up this battle, except we have our new toys. And I want to show you how exactly what the new toys are going to do to these guys. We're finally starting to outclass our first tier of brigands. And uh, it's time to show off. It's time to uh, slaughter these dudes. Normally, uh, if I'm going to face a tough opponent, you know, I kind of want to start with a spear wall, maybe soften them up with a bunch of range damage while they're traveling to me. But in this case, we can just step to them. We have enough armor, we have enough men with levels, and we've got those two pikes. And it's not going to work out well for them. Reinhold continues to be accidentally good. I mean, he missed that guy and shot that guy. I've got some special plans for Reinhold. I mean, he's got he's got the crossbow and, and quick hands. Yeah, you know, like I said last time, I might give him an axe and put him on shield splitting duty. Or, depending on how he levels up, I might have like a super secret special plan for him. Kind of like a behind enemy line situation. Oh, hey, look, crippling strikes, a mace, and a guy without a hat. And he's got a fractured skull. That's pretty much what you get. I love crippling strikes on my, on my flail guys, especially on things without a head cover. You see, whenever I was in the military, they were like, yeah, you better not be caught without some kind of head cover. And I always thought it was because of like the sun or something, like they didn't want me to get heat exhaustion or it was just uh, part of being, uh, being polite and uh, following with tradition in the military. But no, they were afraid some guy was going to come along with a flail and one shot me. They really did have my best interest at heart. Now I was thinking about using adrenaline here on Jizbert, but really there's uh, there's no point at the moment. He's just gonna have to step up and, and poke somebody. These guys probably aren't gonna be alive by that time. I kind of want to show off adrenaline. I think I will this video. Reinholds. He keeps on surprising me. His stats are not very good. But the man has luck on his side. Boom. Headshot. So yeah, like I said, Jizbert has to travel a couple squares to get to this guy. Wow, that, that guy is really determined to run. But we're not going to let him. Now at this point, I I think I'm like a tier behind on uh, getting rotate for my guys. Rotation is really useful in situations like this where you just want to get your pole arms or your range guys in position, but you've got people in the way. I'm going to get rotate on as many people as I can because it's just so damn useful. All right, Jisbert. Oh, well, that guy's not doing too bad with his shield wall. But you don't run from the cleaver. Arn continues to be the de decapitator in chief. And all that's left is the cleanup. That's it. We're getting pretty good at this, this whole thug killing thing. We're still looking for raiders though. We want that raider loot. Anytime we see raiders, of maybe six or less, we're stopping. We're gonna try to kill him. I think we can do it now. There we are. Next contract, please. They still have terrified villagers. 
So I guess this next contract might be the one that we want to get. Honestly, we didn't really get much in that last battle. I'm not sure why I'm here in the inventory checking things out. At least all my guys are content, despite retreating from that battle with the skeletons. Another dagger in the company, though. That's nice. I'm sad about the tools it's going to take to repair it, though. Secure Ancestral Cemetery. Sure. Why not? Well, it says we have just enough tools to do this, I believe. Might as well get some fish. Um, I try to get a variety of food because there's an event that happens uh, if you get a variety of it. Like if you get a little bit of everything all the time, your guys uh, really like it. They, they like that they're not just eating gruel every day. If you feed them the same thing every day, they get kind of a mood shift where they get a little bit grumpy. But if you if you keep things coming in a variety, they can sometimes they can just get uh, ecstatic. And it's nice. It's the little things. Ah, okay, cool. We get to fight some ghouls. And as I said in the video two, I, two or three, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. They're ghouls. In this world, they're kind of a combination of uh, gorilla slash, I don't know, undead gorilla. Essentially, they're animals. Uh, their unique mechanics are, uh, they're, they're pretty fast. Not too durable, but uh, you let them get a hold of a corpse and you, uh, you better watch out. If they, if they eat a corpse off the ground, they become more powerful. They, they heal themselves to full and they go on to their, their next tier. They kind of go super ghoul on you. You'll see. I'm not going to try to let them eat a corpse on purpose right now. Maybe, maybe when I see ghouls and I've got them in kind of a controlled situation, I know they're not going to kill any of my guys. But they're still threatening like this. They can swarm someone. The best way to deal with them, since they're essentially animals, is a spear wall. They'll just keep on jumping on it over and over and over again. They're vicious little dudes. I'm not sure, but I think their morale breaks a little bit less often than dire wolves. Like, you can poke them a bit more, and uh, they, they won't run like a dire wolf will. Their big thing, like, sometimes you find them in, in roving packs like this, just eating whatever they come across, like vultures. Sometimes you see them as a sort of hanger-on to uh, undead armies that you'll see later in the game. You'll see uh, a couple ghouls just following along behind them, attempting to get some of the scraps they leave in their wake. And it becomes kind of a dangerous situation. You leave these guys alive in the middle of fighting a bunch of armored undead. You, you down one, ghoul jumps in, eats it, becomes more powerful, and if he gets a hold of another corpse, uh, it just... It's bad. There's a, a couple... Oh, actually, a few tiers to ghouls. Third tier can just devour one of your guys and uh, put him in his belly for until you kill the thing. And it kind of sucks if he's an essential part of your, your shield line. These guys, these guys don't quite have as many action points as a wolf. I think they only attack twice a turn. The nice thing about them is they don't absorb quite as many hits and armor as a dire wolf, I believe. We're just going after their HP. Let's get back there. Again, I don't want to run through the swamp. No thanks. Not if I can help it. Not only is it tough terrain, it takes more food to get through. You guys burn more calories and everything, but as I said, I don't want to get somebody sick and have, it, have to take them out of the lineup, especially when I only have this many bros. These teeth will be useful to keep around as well. Uh, they're worth exactly 100 gold. And uh, if you keep them, you can have kind of an easy indicator as to what kind of prices a, a town has. Like if they're selling, if they're buying teeth for say 15, that means they're selling that you're they're buying things for 15 percent of the of the price. If this if they're buying it for 20 or 25, it might be time to sell things because 
Apparently, that's uh, it's pretty nice. Hey, look. Hans is no longer Spartan. That's okay. It's It said in the text there that he was getting kind of weak because he wasn't eating anything. I was afraid to, to click on the option that said, hey, uh, I don't really care. Like, if he just kept on wasting away in the camp, I'm afraid he would have gotten a debuff of some kind. No thanks. I'd rather have a a fat, really good soldier than a than a waif. Hmm, a brigand's mission. Two skulls, but honestly, the skulls don't mean much. I mean, they're, they're kind of a general guideline as to how difficult the mission is, but the crowns is what you're looking at. The 500 something total that we're getting for this mission means we can probably handle it in our current state. These guys have ambush trade routes, but I mean, it would be nice to trade with them before we cleared this. But at the same time, I'm, I'm looking to build my reputation up with these guys, too. They have some guys for hire. I wouldn't mind another ranged guy. I wouldn't mind a poacher or something. In my experience, poachers have okay base starting stats, but... They're not guaranteed to grow in anything you want them to grow in. It's just kind of a, a gamble. Hey, Reinhold's leveling up. And he's ranged. And he's going to turn out to be pretty resolute. Which I'm cool with. Maybe I can make him a sergeant someday. If he just continues to grow like this. Yeah, we're going to give Reinhold quick hands. I thought I gave it to him before. But, uh, apparently not. Now he's got quick hands. He can switch between whatever. Crossbow and this polearm. I'll get him a real boy polearm someday when he earns it. So, this poacher. He has okay base stats. So, look at his melee. It's not bad. But he's going to get some pretty good defenses, too. Uh, at least he's there so we can put more arrows downrange at these guys. In this case, we're fighting in the forest. It's going to be a little bit less useful to shoot at things. But I'll take whatever I can get. And since we have no new toys for this particular fight that I want to show off, we're probably going to speed it up a bit to get through to the end. Just because it's something you guys have seen before, and we haven't changed the company significantly since we fought the last bunch of brigand thugs. Oh, there's one brigand raider here. Yay, it's raining. Casper? Let's do this. There's the brigand raider. I'd like to have his armor, but I would take his axe. Now you saw there that the uh, that bows, in and of themselves, don't do a whole lot of damage to armor. They're good against the unarmored gu uh, the unarmored guys. Crossbows are better against the do things like chainmail. Hecken's a little bit fragile to go toe to toe with this raider. I want to put somebody next to him that can do a shield wall at least. Burkhard the Fisherman. He's nothing special either. I really want my pole arms in place, as well as perhaps a flail. I see a couple guys not wearing hats. Oh, there's two flail users over there. So they need to die quickly. That shouldn't be a problem. First order business is this raider, though. He's two-handing that, that uh, hand axe that he's got there. And it's going to hurt if he does hit us. Alright, Reinhold. Gonna give me some of that luck. <laughs> he's the luckiest man alive. His stats say that he shouldn't be doing this well. They really do. I want that flail in there, but I don't 
I probably should have go put him in there first. Whatever. It's okay. We'll we'll make it. I just see no feasible way to get Burkhardt in there and then get our more powerful guys in there too. Just continue with our current course. Another hit to his armor. That's all right. Oh, yeah. Him two-handing that, that hand axe really puts the pain on whoever he hits. All right, Hans. Let's, yeah, definitely a shield wall. I want him to have to go through this shield to get to his HP again. So these guys have moved up next to our spear line and I think I think we're gonna get some pretty good hits on him yeah of course Jizbert does his thing and uses adrenaline this time that means he gets to go first next turn which I am cool with he's gonna need to this is the power of the height advantage I mean my guys might not have a huge chance to hit but they are hitting all their stuff as long as they're up on this on this uh, raised area over here Can we do it, Reinhold? He's a god. Seriously. I guess I did just give him some range skill last uh, last level up, but it's still sub-50. Alright, Jisbert. Thank you, raised, raised uh, terrain. Good stuff. We just can't get in there with anybody else right now. Gotta wait. All right, hit that! Oh my! Just went right after his uh, his HP pool. I wonder if we'll get his his chainmail. That would be cool. And now this is pretty much over. These guys are fleeing. Let's just finish it up. I kind of wish uh, flail guy over there was fleeing too. I mean, I want to wrap this up, but you know, I'm not gonna turn down this loot. Kill everything. All right, finish up, guys. Yeah, we're gonna run him down. Just He just won't go down. Oh, there, when he tries to run, that's when he goes down. Yeah, we got his chain mail. Uh, didn't get his ax. He got to use it, like, what, all of once? Twice? Hmm, whatever. I guess there's some element of chance to it, too. Let's put some levels in our guys. Heck on our new grave robber. Not a terrible level up. Although I kind of wish he got more fatigue. I'll take melee defense though. Plus three. Mm, what do I usually put into people that I have no idea what I want to do with them? Mm, yeah, fast adaptation will work. I was thinking students, but past me says no. Hans gets a predictably good level up because he's Hans. He has three stars and two of the greatest skills. He could use some resolve, though. More stats, because we know he's going to get good stats. Yeah. Fatigue. Wear heavier armor. That's what we want. Burkhard, the fisher man. This guy's going to be built like a brick shit house eventually. He's going to be very tanky. Maybe not very useful otherwise, but let's give him Colossus and put him up to 76 HP. That's that's pretty huge. Friedrich continues to become a melee god. I'm okay with that. What do we want? Yeah. I want to get everybody to at least 50 resolve. That way we're just not going to get instantly broken by undead with uh, some ghost support. The undead are terrifying, and then they have their their uh, wraiths that 
come over there and come over and frighten your men very very much. Having fifty resolve kind of helps with that, gives you a little bit of a uh, little bit of room. But since he's going to have a big weapon that uh, swings a little bit less frequently than say uh, just using a sword, we gave him some adrenaline. The rest is just kind of uh, inventory management. Sped that up for you, just as a courtesy. You get to see the end result, at least. Let's go collect our reward. Hey, no longer has ambush trade routes. I probably should have traded with the guy, these guys before that, like went and bought something somewhere else and then uh, sold it to them here because they're kind of desperate for goods. But you know what? That's all right. I'll try to uh, do that a little bit better in the future. All right, that's it for this video. I'm El Pato. This was Battle Brothers. I'll see you next time.